business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 295,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash AAA to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. And by Landtronics, maker of the X-Print server. Print from any Android phone, tablet, Chromebook, or Kindle Fire to virtually any printer. For more information, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and enter the code twit to receive free shipping on your order. And by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 amazon.com gift card when you get a loan. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 161, recorded on Tuesday, May 13th, 2014. We are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Aaron Newcomb. Oh, oh we didn't talk about this. Uh, sorry about that. What? What? Okay, you go. I'm Aaron Newcomb. And you go. I'm Gina Trevani. There we go. All right. Phew. Man, that, that was almost awkward. It was. Nah, nah. <laughs> it was. Okay. It was. Good friends here. Old it, friends. It's it's all good. Aaron, it's great to have you back. We yeah. uh, we got uh, you know we we ejected Ron, but we got Aaron. <laughs> That's right. Double A, R O N. <laughs> good to have you on. Ron uh, could not make the show today, unfortunately, but uh, I think we're in capable hands this week, uh, and we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about this time around. Uh, Oracle obviously has a win uh, regarding Java and Android. Uh, the newly unveiled Moto E, which is interesting to say the least. A uh, whole bunch of other things, including glass pretty much for everybody. Um, yeah, just a lot of stuff to talk about it. Let's uh, get into it. Go into the news. So, Aaron, what is this whole Oracle thing about? We, we This kind of poked its head a couple of years ago. Right. We talked about it on the show. And then uh, I realized you're coming on today and you probably better talk about it than I am. Well, I mean, I, I know a little bit about what's going on only because I was at Sun when yeah. when Android first started out <clears throat> and they started using Java and there was some high level discussions. I was not party to this. This is all just my mm -hmm. hearsay, my opinion. Um, but there was some discussions because up until that point, if you remember, all of the old feature phones, well, not all of them, almost all of them ran Java. So that's how you were able to play those little games on your phone and all that stuff back in the day on the feature phones. Right. And they all bought a license from Sun for Java. So that was actually a pretty big moneymaker for Sun. And then, of course, Android comes around. They're using Java API. Everything looks like Java. And Sun was like, hey, give us some money. And it just it didn't work out. And that was kind of the end of it for a little bit. And then, of course, Oracle acquired Sun, right? Mm -hmm. So Oracle's like, hey, give us some money. And then they're like, okay, we're going to court because uh, Oracle's a little bit bigger than Sun was. So they went to court. This was a few years ago, and they finally came back today, or not today, this week. And the um, uh, at first they had struck down and then said, no, you know, you can't collect money on this. You can't request license fees on this. Uh, Google's fine. And then, but then they, you know, bumped it up to the appeals court. Actually, the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit in Washington was where they bumped it up to. And they came back this week and said, nope, guess what? Actually, um, you can request money, and that is infringing on the, on the Java copyright. Um, so we'll see what happens from here. It may get bumped up again, which I believe would take it all the way to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. But essentially, Oracle's seeking about a billion dollars. Because if you can imagine, um, you know, every they're basically claiming every Android phone that's ever been sold or ever been made um, should have paid some license fees to, uh, at this point, Oracle um, as the owner of Java. So that's what they're claiming. The appeals court agrees with them at this point. And we'll see where it goes from here. I believe Google is going to fight this, though. So, um, so we'll see what happens. It does have pretty broad implications. I, I believe the, the biggest loser in this, if, if it actually goes through, is going to be Java itself. Um, because I don't think people will really want to continue developing on Java if this type of thing could happen. I mean, I know for a, there's a lot of people out there that, that code in Java. They're software developers. They use Java all the time. 
um, I really think something like this is just bad news for the the um, continuation of Java as a, a programming language that people want to code for because it's very risky at this point. If you right. you know if you if you develop something in Java and you, you don't think you're using anything proprietary to Oracle, now you really have to call that into question, and maybe you choose just to go with something safer. So um, is Java at this point kind of a fading? Fading platform. I wouldn't to, say it's fading. I mean, yeah. a lot of people still use it, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are developing in Java. There's tons and tons of apps out there that are written in Java. So I wouldn't say it's fading, but I think this could be a nail in the coffin if they're not careful. So, um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. It's a little bit disappointing. Um, this could be a case where the, you know, based on where the, the um, appeals court is located, mm -hmm. maybe they're just more favorable to this copyright claim than it would have been in another court. So we'll see what happens from here, whether Google decides to kick it up to, uh, to, the, to the Supreme Court or not. But definitely something to keep your eyes on. Yeah, I mean, I had completely forgotten about this. You know, we, we, we discussed this, I think, a couple of years ago when it first kind of came around and it really seemed like, oh, I guess nothing's happening here. And then suddenly here it is again. And uh oh, it has the uh, potential to change everything. Right. Um, although kind of hard to say that from something like this, suddenly Android would be completely different. It would probably be more, you know, paying the fee up front than some sort of licensing of, of some kind right. to keep the features in there and... For the everyday user, probably doesn't change a whole lot. No, no. For the everyday user, it won't change. I mean, yeah. prices may go up just slightly. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you remember, Microsoft tried to do this too because there's Linux running on Android phones as well. The Linux kernel is involved. And so there's some uh, patent claims or copyright claims that, that Microsoft has as well. And they started charging, I think uh, HTC is paying, um, I don't know if Samsung is, but I know HTC is paying Microsoft yes. uh, for, for license fees and, and other, other handset manufacturers as well. Um, so, I mean, this has happened before and I think it's in the end, it is bad for consumers because, um, there's not as much opportunity to, to reduce the price point. Although we're going to talk about a phone in a minute where you actually can reduce that price point quite a bit, but there's mm -hmm. still always going to be some overhead. Um, and, uh, I don't know, it feels a little bit, a little bit in bad taste, you know, to go back and say, Hey, I know it's business, but come on guys, really, right. you really have to have all these license fees for something that I, I it's really I, it's from what I understand it's really in the API in this case right it's the right. Java API That's kind of what it, and it's like can you foundation. really can you copyright an API should you even from a business case would you even want to copyright an API I mean you want people to use this thing you don't want to limit them from using it but well, that's kind of at the heart of this whole deal is the fact you know a lot of people are are, are calling for this saying you know the people that are ruling and and arguing this case don't actually know a lot about technology and the nuance in technology to kind of understand why, you know, why you're saying, Aaron, that, that an API shouldn't be copyrightable um, or what the, you know, how that's different from copyright of, of say, you know, other types of code or right. whatever. There's a lot of nuance in there and uh, you need a judge, you need a, a jury that, that kind of understands on a certain level uh, a little bit deeper uh, in that regard. What do you think about this, Gina? I mean, this this really really bums me out because my I mean my understanding of this is that this actually extends way beyond Java. That this is about whether or not APIs are copyrightable, right? And APIs, uh, you know, go go way beyond a particular language. Um, and so, you know, we we saw that the, the first judge said, "Oh no, you can't copyright an API." And in fact, that judge I think implemented you know a, str a, a simple method actually in Java was not a coder implemented a simple method and said that doing this isn't isn't infringing on copyright. And we all kind of had a laugh about. It. Like yay, somebody who knew what he was what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So this reversal is is really is is pretty is pretty upsetting. I mean, I, I don't think it, it means that people aren't you know developers are going to stop using Java. I mean, Google wrote the Dalvik VM for Java and implemented all of Java's APIs for their own virtual machine. You know, small time developers, small you know, or even medium sized businesses. Very few companies are actually going to be writing a virtual machine and implementing you know a full API of a language. That's not. I don't. I don't think. That that, that's the issue. But the issue is if APIs are indeed copyrightable, that's that's really scary because it means that anybody who decides to implement a particular design pattern that someone has decided to copyright in another language, you know, is open to getting sued. It's just, it sets really bad precedent. It's bad news bears. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the way that the, and I don't believe it's the way the industry is going. This is counter to the way the industry is going. Uh, yes. Oracle says, um, in their in the decision, they they call it a win for an industry that relies on copy protection to fuel innovation. I don't know if they're talking about 
the traditional record industry or the MPAA. This this is not what you know. People that are are innovating in this space um, are not relying on copyright protection. I mean, they're going out there, they're trying new things. They want to use these APIs. They don't want to be restricted in using them or have to pay license fee fees. I mean, these are you know startups that are getting going in the industry. It's it, they are not relying on copyright protection. I can guarantee you to fuel innovation. So um, I I don't know. This is lawyers talking. So mm -hmm. you know they're they're going to try to spin it whatever way they can. But I I, mean, I completely disagree with that. I think it actually hinders innovation in the industry. So and yes. if the, oh sorry go Gina. No, nope. I was just just agreeing. Um, if this goes to the Supreme Court, which it kind of sounds like it, that's probably where it's headed at this point, uh, based on kind of where we've been and kind of the the reversal, the big reversal that we've seen in the last couple of years, um, we have a lot, probably a long time to wait yet before we know the true outcome of this. So, yeah, um, I don't know. It's just one of those things that's going to keep popping up here every once in a while. Keep your eye on uh, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there's that. Uh, this piques my interest in the sense that I'm a Google Voice user and have been for a while and love the service. And I've actually lately been using the VoIP capabilities of Google Voice on my Android device, something that Google doesn't necessarily allow you to do. And I think it's probably because of the carriers. The carriers probably don't want Google to be able to grant you access to using Google Voice as a VoIP service on your device, but you can use it through other apps like the one I've been using is Talkatone. I think I featured it in the arena um, months ago. And then you know, Groove IP is another one. Well, basically, this is a reminder that those services that rely on the XSMP, that's the Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol that drives those apps, uh, the cutoff is May 15th. And that is, what, two days from now? So Google, you know, seven or eight months ago basically said, um, we're going to cut off support for XSMP. If your service, you know, revolves on this, it basically it's going to go dark if, if it re still relies on the Google Voice um, protocol. So, uh, you know, figure out other other options. And all signs are kind of pointing to Google roping this into Hangouts in some capacity. Mm -hmm. I think everybody was kind of ho everybody, including myself, that kind of depends on this to a certain degree, uh, was hoping that it would happen before the cutoff. Um, that's two days from now. So I have yeah. a good feeling it's going to get cut off. And, and folks like myself, like I'm, I'm on T-Mobile with the, uh, with the Nexus five and I'm on their $30 plan, mm -hmm. right? That's a hundred minutes. I always thought a hundred minutes. Wow. I never talk on the phone. That's going to be a piece of cake. Uh, regularly every month I pass a hundred minutes. And yeah. when I pass, if I pass a hundred minutes, my only option then is to do VoIP unless I re up, uh, through T-Mobile. So, uh, I'm a little worried about this. I really hope that they do what they did on iOS already, which was, you know, bring that VoIP capability into the Hangouts app. I was just hoping that they'd do it sooner rather than later. And it looks yeah. like we're probably waiting until at least IO before we know more. Right. I mean, that's one of the, one of the big rumors, right? Is that there's going to be more convergence around Hangouts. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I know we've talked about it several times, I think the three of us and Ron too, how we all hope that they bring voice into Hangouts and going to get that unified client, that unified voice client. <clears throat> for both messaging and VoIP and video chat and, you know, just bring mm -hmm. it all together. Um, you know, Ron doesn't like the combined client. I think we went over that a couple of mm -hmm. times, but, um, you know, f from my standpoint, it's like, you know what, right now I've got Google Talk, I've got Google Voice, I've got Google Hangouts, and I would really love to just have that all unified into one. So I really hope that that's where they're headed with this. I know I use Hangouts at home now for for calls regularly instead of going to get my phone. Like, especially if I already have my headset on. And, and a call comes through. A call comes through. through or right. if I just need to make a call to somebody and I'm looking at their website and the phone number's right there, mm -hmm. I'll just drag it over or copy it and drag it over to Gmail, which is in the Hangout sidebar, and make a call from there. Um, and I do that all the time. I do it for work. <laughs> I, do, I, I do my work calls that way. Um, and this is hopefully nobody from work is watching this. But, like, the, one of the reasons I do it is because sometimes on those really long conference calls, there's periods where it has nothing to do with anything that I'm responsible for or I need to talk about or anything. Mm. So, you know, I can listen to other things while the conference call is going on, right? So <laughs> no. listen to some music, you know. <laughs> um, uh, so, but, but seriously, I mean, there's just, there's lots of reasons to do it. So I, I just, I'm really looking forward to, I hope that this is an indication that they're going to go ahead and unify all this. And, and like you said, bring the VoIP capability yeah. into the app on the Android phone would be great. Are you a voice, Google voice user, Gina? 
Yes, exclusively. It's yep. my it's my main number, um, and uh, I've been watching the the app sort of decay over time. Clearly, not getting updated, not the new design, you know, design guidelines. Hoping that it was going to be the, the the you know the the, the promise of unification was actually going to happen last I/O. Kind of still hoping it's going to happen this I/O. But you know, indications are that it might happen. Actually, is a really good segue into the next story, which is that uh, Google Play Services, a new release 4.4, is rolling out this week, and you know, that's the, the Google Play Services, of course, is the system that helps apps connect to Google services. So it's really new features for developers. Uh, we've basically got two change logs here. We've got the official one and the unofficial one. So the official change log from Google says the new version uh, gives developers access to Google Maps Street View and indoor maps. It gives them activity recognition, like if the user's walking, biking, or driving. It gives updates to game services, mobile ads, and wallet. The unofficial changelog, of course, comes from Android Police, uh, who gave <laughs> the new play services APK their famous teardown treatment. Uh, and there's a lot there. I think it's a, a whole four megabytes bigger. And, you know, since I.O. is coming up next month, Android Police is saying what they generally do is precede uh, a bunch of new functionality into releases, you know, leading up to the show, and then they can unveil them on stage there at the end of June. So... They tore down the new APK, which is the, the, the new executable, and they found a bunch of stuff. Uh, new permissions, some of which are Google Apps specific. Android Wear support, of course. We're going to hear a lot about wearables at I.O. A bunch of new SMS Hangouts and Google Voice related code, which seems to indicate, you know, not, sh not sure why. I don't know if it's going to if it means unification or if it means that app developers are going to have APIs into the messaging app, because um, that's generally what Play Services is about. Uh, what else? Uh, screen mirroring to Chromecast uh, and a firmware updater, which I didn't really hmm. know what to do about, uh, what to do with that. Um, that could be just a tool for developers uh, or it could mean that, you know, Android's about to get less fragmented or Google's going to have more control over updating your firmware. Not, not sure. Uh, but no matter what, it, it looks like we're just we're going to get a lot of interesting stuff at I/O, uh, particularly for developers, and I think it's going to come through Play Services. Mm -hmm. So hoping, hoping for voice, hoping for voice and Hangouts. I'm actually fine. Like I, I, I'm okay with just joining the Hangouts thing. Like I, you know, whatever. I don't love Hangouts, but it works, and it's modern, and they're working on it, and they're obviously committed resources to resources to it. So if, if, if voice rolled in the Hangouts, fine. My computer rings now when my when my phone rings, and like that's cool, that works. Uh, I'm I'm good to go. So I just I just want it to happen because I want to have one single communication app, um, and that's it. Yeah, yeah I, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I mean the voice app on the phone mm. right now it really doesn't. A lot of times I'll get a message, but it doesn't notify me. And then mm -hmm. I'll open it up and then it'll be like, oh, you have three missed calls or something. I'm like, yeah. oh, well, thanks yeah, for like, telling me. Right. It's like updating. Right. There's no MMS. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, you know, it's a like, pretty I, sad app at this point. It, it, yeah. It's, so it's, it's, pretty, it's suffering from a great yeah. deal of atrophy at this point. Right. So and it's, like time, you, it's time to put it to bed. Yeah. And like you said, that all the development right now is going on in Hangouts. Mm -hmm. um, and so it makes sense to bring that in. I mean, I never get that same feeling with Hangouts, like if I get an SMS or if I get uh, a, a message from a relative or something on Hangouts, I never get that same like, oh, I never got it. Like it's always yeah. comes up right away, notifications there, it's easy to use. So I don't know. I guess we'll have to keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. I've just had, yeah. I've had voice issues lately to the point to where like the, the people that run my daycare, they don't use my voice number anymore because oh. I was I was straight up not getting messages from them. Mm. I look at their call log. I'm like, okay, I don't believe it. You're not you're sending it to the wrong number. No, it's there, and it's just not not triggering for you. me. And yeah. that's that's like a deal breaker, right? Like if you yeah. have kids and they're in a daycare, they need to be able to contact you 24 seven right. immediately about something. Yeah. So I had to give them my my regular number. So now that just kind of sucks from a, a, the service standpoint because now now my numbers are fragmented, right? Right. Right. <laughs> so, right. It's like, who has this number? Who has exactly. that number? Yeah, it's, exactly. And it's hard to keep straight. Um, so I really hope that they they pay more attention to voice going forward. And I, I don't see why they wouldn't at this point. They've made they've made no uh, made it no secret that. Uh, that's their plan is mm -hmm. to bring voice into Hangouts. We'll just see how deep that goes. So looking forward to that. Uh, let's see here. We have an email from Byron. And Byron wrote in about Google Maps because we always talk so so positively about Google Maps. 
Byron says, I couldn't care less about the new lane change stuff. I really miss the old navigation app. The Maps app is terrible if you're trying to use it while driving. This is a pretty good point. Uh, I guess it's fine if you're sitting somewhere before your trip, planning your route, but on the road, I hate it. For example, say I get on the 101 in LA and it's bumper to bumper traffic in the old navigation app. You could easily hit an options button, tick avoid highways, and it would reroute you to surface streets. Now in the latest version, you have to go back twice, hit the options button, tick avoid highways, hit done, then hit start navigation again. Way too many many steps and especially while you're driving which by the way you're not supposed to be touching the device while right. you're driving so right. keep that in mind i've also noticed the voice doesn't tell you street names anymore it will just say turn right and that's not true i don't right. know why yeah. sometimes it does that it, sometimes it will do street names so i don't know what the difference I, i've is. had that before um so well go ahead and finish the email i'll tell you about that part uh also in the old navigation app had a large easy to find microphone button uh, I'd say my destination, confirm, and I was on my way. Much easier than clicking the search box, finding the tiny little microphone in the lower left corner of the keyboard, and boom, I just got in a wreck. And that's actually not true. I uh, checked it out. I can actually show you right here um, if my phone will, will cooperate here. We'll go into Maps, and if I go into get rid of see there's there's my microphone yeah. so i suppose you do have your microphone down on the keyboard but you should have it up there but point taken in the fact that if this is supposed to be an app that's driving friendly there should really be from from the main menu yeah. here from the main map there should be a microphone button why is there not uh, there is when you touch on search though right? there is when you touch on search yeah. um but then you know again you're right. driving right? right so that's two clicks now you have to like find that tiny little thing like implement like a large microphone button that's easy to press. I don't know. So I thought that was a pretty good point. Uh, he says, I'm sure you get my point. It's not very optimized for use while driving. And frankly, it's more dangerous to use the old, or more dangerous to use than the old navigation app. I really hope they address these in the future. What were you going to say about the... Uh, yeah, so sometimes right. that it will default. So so when it when that happens about the turn right and it doesn't say turn right on this road, yeah. what it's doing is it's defaulting back. It can't find the, navi the uh, navigation scripts. And so it's defaulting back. The default mode is just to say, turn right, turn mm -hmm. left. In 300 feet, take a right. That's what it says by default. If it didn't have any of those extra uh, voice synthesis stuff built into the phone, if you were to delete all those voice files from your right. phone, that's what it would say. That's the default. And so what you need to do if that happens, it probably there's A, either a bug in that, that's regressed, that's come back. Um, I've had that happen a couple times. It, it used to be a, a, a bad problem. They seem to have fixed it. But if that happens, uninstall updates and then install the updates again from Google Maps. Go to Google Maps in the Play Store, uninstall updates, and then install them again. It should come back and work. But I have noticed that some developers are doing something with the voice because I tried to enable the uh, UK version of the voice. And so now what happens is I get an interesting thing where sometimes it comes on with a British accent and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's the American accent. Sometimes it's the British accent. <laughs> I never know which I'm going to get. But you never know who the passenger is in your car. Right, right. You know? I never know Not who's going to give me directions. But uh, either way, I'm I'm good as long as I get there. But, yeah, exactly. But yeah, that does happen. And if it does happen to you, uninstall the updates and then reinstall, and that should fix the issue. Or if the bug has regressed into like if they just rolled out a new version, just wait a couple of days. They'll probably roll out a patch to fix yeah. it because it seems like that bug keeps coming back again and again. I actually had to do that the other day. I had to uninstall the up, uh, the updates on Maps and reinstall it because in the new version of Maps, turn by turn wasn't actual like turn by turn. It right. was point on a map, looking down, watching my arrow go around. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, no, just give me turn by turn. Like it's still giving me directions, but right. it's not the friendly like forward facing yeah, navigation yeah, view. Yeah, yeah. And when I when I reverted and then reinstalled, it worked fine. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that tends to fix things. Ultimately, I think actually this week. I'm wiping my Nexus 5 and starting over because it's, man, it's doing some weird things oh, lately. And I think I've just installed a lot of apps uh, right, over the right. last You're many playing months. with it too much. Yeah, well, you know, it's Tinkering with it too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, the other thing about the Maps thing is um, uh, I, I think what they're going for here eventually is an always-on type of a listening service, right? And mm -hmm. and and the, um, was it the Moto X, I think, does that already. Yes. A couple other phones oh, man, do, too. I would love that on navigation. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think that's what they're going for is eventually it'll just be on in the car, and you'll say navigate to something. You won't have to look down. You won't have to touch anything because I think they that you know that's really important, and I think they're almost getting there. There's probably some tricky engineering work, though, um, 
you know, it reminds me of the Silicon Valley show. I don't know if you guys watched that, but Love it. <laughs> there's a special compression algorithm there that they uh, <laughs> they need to acquire from a company in order to get that voice recognition to work in the car. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to come. That's where they're going. I think they re recognize that that's a problem with having to look down and type things. They don't want anyone getting a ticket for using well, Google and that, Maps. And that's it. Well, yeah, a ticket or even worse. But right. um, absolutely. I mean, if you're touching your phone while you're driving in certain states, that's going to get you pulled over. Yeah. I've realized you know that. that huh? I know this firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> Happened to be not too long ago. Thankfully, I was at a stoplight. But even there, right? Even like there, you're at yeah, a stoplight and you touch that phone, police officer sees it, they're going to pull you over, at least in the state of California, that's yep. the case. So. Yep. Uh, keep that in mind. I'm sure Google is kind of battling that perception as yeah, well. You know, yeah. That reality. Uh, let's take a break. Thank our first sponsor of today's episode. And that would be 99designs. Man, they do fantastic work over at 99designs. It's a community of designers working for you, basically. A logo can look gorgeous when it fills your computer screen. Uh, how's it going to look when it's just in the top of, you know, top corner of a web page? How's it going to look on letterhead, a uh, business card? Is it going to fill a billboard? Scalability in design is crucial, particularly when it comes to logo design. But in design in general, you want it to look good at every size. And it's crucial to bear versatility in mind when it comes to your logo design. Uh, I don't think about these kind of things because I'm not a designer. But that's the beauty of 99designs. It's a community of people that do think about those kind of things. If you need a little guidance when it comes to the design process, Get access to world-class customer support 24-7 when you visit 99designs.com. They make it easy. They make it affordable to get custom graphic design work done quickly. And that's what it's all about. They guarantee you'll end up with a design you love. Uh, what if you could start your next design project today and have dozens of designs to choose from in just seven days, right? You tell them what, what you have in store. You know, are you creating an app? Are you creating, you want a logo? You want a website design? What, whatever the case may be, these are designers that are waiting for your work to come through the pipeline and they hop on it and then you get to pick from the best of the best. So you end up making out pretty awesome as a result. Uh, here's what you can do. Visit 99designs.com slash AAA to take a look at just a ton of examples of uh, different design projects that have been done through the site and the current design projects as well. If you go to 99designs.com slash AAA, you'll get a $99 power pack of services for free. Power pack upgrade gives you more designer time and attention. 99designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design project in 99designs marketplace. You'll get nearly twice as many designs if you do it that way. So I implore you, uh, take a look at the site, 99designs.com slash AAA. See what what uh, the designers, the designer pool have done for other folks and get an idea for what they could do for you. That's what it's all about. Visit 99designs.com slash AAA and we thank 99designs for the continued support of All About Android and the Twit Network. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, cool hardware news. Let's get to it. <laughs> Motorola yeah. has announced the Moto E. E. It's cheaper uh, than the Moto G. It's kind of the, the smartphone for everyone. If you go to goodbyedumbphone.com is the Moto <laughs> E's marketing site. And um, this thing's looking pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, really cheap, really, really good hardware. So yeah, so let's run, run through it. It's 129 off contract, and this is 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon 200 processor, one gigabyte RAM, 4.3 inch uh, display, 960 by 540 display, uh, 1980 mAh battery, five megapixel rear facing camera, no front facing camera, four gigabytes internal storage, micro SD slot, back plates can be customized. Um, really good looking phone, pretty great phone for for very for pretty low price off contract. Um, also, the Moto they, Motorola announced that the Moto G with LTE will be available for two hundred and eighteen dollars off contract. This is awesome, you guys. Yeah. yeah, this is really good, especially for kids. Like, you know, if you have kids going into you know getting their first phone or going into middle school or something, uh, at least that's when we started phones. You know, smartphones for our kids was like. Okay, when you go into middle school and you have to stay after, you know, for special events or soccer practice or whatever, you never know when it's going to end. You know, they need, kids need a phone to call home. And this is a perfect entry level phone. I mean, it is water resistant. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's plenty snappy enough for kids to have fun, play some games, do what they need to do. 
um, you know, it doesn't have a flash. It doesn't have um, the front-facing camera, like you mentioned. I don't know that that's a yeah, deal for kids, breaker. Though, for kids not having a front-facing camera for their selfies, you have to imagine that, uh, that that might be one of those things. It's like, oh, you ended up with that phone. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. Though. I think. I, I think know. My I kids think it looks be, pretty good. I think my kids would be would be happy with this. Um, I, I, th I I guess I just think about <clears throat> my four year old daughter mean, who who you know she has some games on my phone. Probably one of the reasons why I need to uh, wipe out my Nexus Five and start over again. <laughs> but you know some of those games actually use that front facing camera to like you know she creates a bow or something and then she can take a picture of herself and put the bow on it. Um, and that's something that she loves to do when she's four. You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Um, right. But yes. No. Ab and absolutely. I, like. Motorola has to cut corners in order to make a phone that only costs $129 off contract. Uh, and I think that's kind of an obvious obvious thing to get rid of. Yeah. And, and, and this is a good looking phone. Like this isn't like, you don't look at this phone and they go like, that's the cheap phone. It's running KitKat. It's running the late, latest version of Android. I mean, this is, this is, a, this is a really nice device. I would buy yeah. this device. I'd use this device. And not feel like oh I you know I got the cheap low low level phone. I mean that's mm -hmm. what it is, right? But it doesn't. It 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 looks pretty good. Yeah. And what's the app? I can't remember the name. They've got a special app that came with it. Uh, oh, it was the emergency the emergency yeah, the emergency thing. Something. That that's another reason why I say it's good for kids is because yeah, that's um, true. Um, they demoed it on um, phone phone. Arena, <laughs> phone. Motorola alert. Or maybe it was there. We go. Motorola yeah, alert. Yeah, yeah alert. That's what it was. Emoji. Notify families in case of emergency. Okay, right, yeah. right. So it has an emergency mode, which when you press it, it automatically sends texts out to whoever you you know put on put on there, and it calls an emergency number. So that could be like you know your parent if you if there's an emergency, whatever. You just hit that button. That's all they have to worry about. But there's mm -hmm. also like a meet me part of it. Which is like, you know how like, you know, your kids, well, maybe you guys don't know. I know. Uh, you know, you drop off your kids somewhere like the mall or something. And you don't know where to, where they are. And you want a, an easy way to figure it out. Mm -hmm. What? It, so your kid can actually hit the meet me button on it. It'll send your GPS coordinates to the parent, which can then click on them and automatically open them up in Google Maps to, to direct you exactly which corner your kid is waiting on Excellent. for you to pick them up. So things like that I think is really cool. Um so, you know, that app, um, I'm, I don't know if that's going to also, I'm assuming that'll also run on, you know, Moto X and I tried to, I, I tried, Moto G, I logged in to see if it would install on my wife's Moto X and it did not say it that didn't. it was compatible. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. There's uh, nothing did special it the about web, it. I know. So. They did it through the mm. web interface and it didn't, I expected to see that it would. Yeah. And it wasn't there. But, uh, but I'm kind of wondering if they did that with kids in mind. Like if they yeah. knew like, yeah, this is going to kind of be for, you know, that first self, first smartphone totally. or younger audience. It'd be good to have an app in there that parents can feel comfortable that their kids are going to have like that emergency button if they mm -hmm. need it. So. Mm -hmm. Four, cool. yeah. four gigs of internal storage obviously isn't a lot, but it does have the micro SD card slot. Yep. Uh, so you can extend that yep. if, if you want more storage than that. I, yeah, I mean, great price. $129 off contract. Great looking hardware. Um, obviously, it's for the people who maybe have never had a smartphone before. Uh, yeah. But they also have to, even though this is less expensive than, than a lot of other devices off contract, still have to pay, be okay with paying the monthly data fee. Right. And that can be another mountain to tackle for a lot, <laughs> yeah. for a lot of people. But it makes sense. I mean, my, my mom got her first smartphone recently and it was a Moto X. You know, awesome. so so similar. It work well you know, for her. Yeah, 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 it works great for her. And I didn't, even, you know, she, she got it on her own. She's like, you know, she just my, picked it out. I was like, I was pretty impressed. I'm like, yeah, it's a good phone, mom. My dad so, went rogue. Months ago, yeah, and uh, bought himself an iPhone. Ooh, and then and, and, you know, I found out about all this later. I was like, hey, Dad, you got to talk to your son. I know about this kind of stuff. <laughs> and he went rogue, got the iPhone first, first smartphone. Three days later, took it back. It was just too complicated for him. Now he's back on a uh, flip phone, and I, it could have soured the experience for him. Right. Like, no, right. yeah, wow, interesting. So I don't know. Maybe he'll come back around. In, right. the, in the U.S. anyway, I mean, for someone to buy a phone like this that's off contract and, I mean, does it come with, I'm not sure if it comes with a SIM card. I mean, so, so you buy this phone and then you have to walk into a T-Mobile store, an AT&T store and say, hey, yeah. I need a SIM card. You know, is a regular consumer going to even know what that's like, right? I mean, I think Americans particularly are just used to walking into a Verizon store, choosing a phone there or what, you know, like getting the phone with with the service is so kind of ingrained in our, you know, unlike 
unlike in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the only other thing. I, you know, T-Mobile, I have that $30 T-Mobile plan that you have, Jason. They've kind of buried it in the site. It's not easy oh, yeah. to find it. You can't get, you know, like I walked into the store uh, to get the, the new SIM for my, um, the M8. And they were like, you know, the red shirts were like, where did you get this plan? You know, they didn't know. Yeah. So, I mean, like this is this phone I'd want, I would, if my daughter was a lot older, I would get her this phone with that T-Mobile plan, um, which is, which actually the capped minutes would actually serve me well in, in that case. Uh, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be easy to do, right? Right, right. Um, well, we switched to- a um, barrier that uh, supports this kind of thing. I mean, we I recently switched everybody but me to T-Mobile and it's the share, family share plan, mm -hmm. whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. um, which is really great for families because it's like $10, $10 to add another phone to the plan. It's unlimited talk and unlimited data. Well, it's not unlimited data. They, they do cap you at like 2.5. It's a 500 or 2.5. Anyway, um, so it's a really good plan, though, because I don't have to worry about too many texts, too many calls, mm -hmm. you know, data. All they're going to do is slow down the data if it gets to a certain right. point. So I've told them, you know, make sure you're on Wi-Fi if you're downloading stuff. And that's really all I had to do. So. Um, and we brought all our own phones. I bought them on Craigslist, brought them in, activated them, no big deal. So I think T-Mobile is starting to change that equation. I do, I agree with you though, for the majority of Americans, they're just going to walk into Verizon and say, you know, what, what do you, what do you, what have you got? Not worry about contracts, unfortunately. Um, Right, but it's a, but it's I, sort of the death march into the contract. You it is that you're like committing yourself to a phone for, and a contract for two years. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think that, that that perception has to change. I don't think carriers are are you know jumping to the front of the line to try to change that perception because they want to lock you into a contract, and we're just going to used to that mm -hmm. here yeah. in the states. We're addicted to the the contracts, addicted to the subsidies rather, maybe not the contracts. <laughs> no, right. But, uh, but phones like this, the more that they happen, you know, the the less addicted we get. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we become, I guess. Uh, and then, how about in mythical uh, Nexus device land? Uh, anything, anything going on out there? Uh, maybe. You know, maybe. Let me find <laughs> where we're at in the no, notes no, no. here. Hey, yeah, don't. Uh, oh, yeah, HTC Nexus device shows up um, in Android source code. So there's we're always looking for the next Nexus, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, this is a rumor that came out. Ars Technica actually had this um, this rumor about this HTC-made uh, Nexus device. So um, it's pretty interesting. I mean, uh, you know, could this be like the Nexus 6 to come up? Or there's also other rumors about um, a new potentially like 8-inch Nexus tablet um, I saw floating around recently. Um, but really, if you think about it, I think the Nexus One was the last HTC. Mm -hmm. And I really love the Nexus One. I mean, I, I did not want to get rid of my Nexus One, but it just wasn't cutting it finally. I had to get rid of it. Um, and so I really do hope that they actually, you know, if HTC made a device, I think it would be great. Besides, HTC, I think, needs a little love. You know, Samsung's doing fine. They've got things going on. You know, LG's had the last couple of Nexus phones. Um, and, and they seem to be picking up, but you know, HTC is making some really good devices and they're just not quite getting, at least from my perception, the same kind of traction that, you know, the yeah. Samsung devices are getting. So if this rumor is true, um, I think it would be really great. And it kind of not levels the playing field, but at least, you know, shows some love to, you know, kind of spread the, the vendor love around from an Android perspective, um, let everybody have a chance. And, and, and if I remember correctly, they do have a process where, um, you know, the, the vendors actually bring in like their candidates, right, for Nexus phones um, and, and Google vets them. I remember seeing an interview, I think, um, about this topic where they actually say, look, we actually don't show preference to any vendor, but we do vet these phones. They bring them in, these these tester models, and we, we try them out and we see which one looks best. And then that's the one that gets the next nod for Nexus device. So, um, so I don't think that's true, but just kind of in my, you know, in my heart of hearts, I'd like to see mm -hmm. HTC get another Nexus device because they did so, so good with the Nexus One. Yeah, people love the Nexus One. Yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, well, I mean, so it's a, what is it? It's Flounder. So it's definitely a Nexus device of some sort because that's just the code name that Nexus right. devices have gotten prior to any sort of official announcement. Uh, could be a tablet because we're kind of at a tablet point, but HTC really doesn't do tablets right, these right. days. The Flyer and the, do you remember the Jetstream? Yeah. That incredibly expensive Jetstream. I yeah. Think. God, man, that thing was so expensive. And uh, I think it was one of my first reviews for, for Twit, actually. Oh, really? And, uh, wow, yeah, that was that was a harsh one. I, I'm sure we have it floating around here somewhere. Uh, so I guess it could be a tablet. Uh, mm. We're definitely at the point to where, you know, the Nexus 7, uh, you know, the next tablet would be updated. Right. So, right. I don't know. That would be interesting. There was also a codename Molly, which is also a fish. 
uh, could be a set-top box of some kind. And mm -hmm. there were kind of details pointing to uh, media codecs, the Marvell uh, system on a chip, and possible lack of a standard button layout kind of clues to tie in with Molly uh, being a set-top box. So, you know, we keep hearing about this Android TV thing. So I don't know. I think we're starting, you know, it's starting to kind of come together what we might hear about from a hardware perspective at I.O. this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of hope the Android TV thing happens. Yeah, I do um, My Google TV, I'm losing buttons on the remote now, and we use it all the time, but it's like, okay, I need, I'm ready for the next thing. Like, bring on the next thing. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. There's nothing here about uh, a, a watch, but I guess, I guess that's a separate piece of hardware. Hmm. Yeah, I mean the that would talk to it via APIs. You know that there wouldn't oh. necessarily be mentions of it in the source code. That's interesting though. I love that. Um, that like a Nexus, a Nexus, yeah, a Nexus watch. Yeah, like a yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I guess a Google the watch. They, yeah, the Google. I guess the watches that they announced. Yeah. Are from partners, right? But those, I mean, they're going to need some sort of reference. I guess those are sort of the reference devices. So I wouldn't. It, I guess it makes sense. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be like a Nexus watch. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> interesting. Interesting. Yeah. That was the rumor, though. I mean, we're all kind of. I mean, we talked about watches a lot on the show, mm -hmm. and that was the rumor is that you know let's wait and see what Google brings out, right? And then all of a sudden it's Google Wear, and it's all the device manufacturers making you know kind of making devices for that particular um, reference architecture for the that they brought out for Google Wear. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll see. Some of those new devices look pretty cool, too, especially the new LG device. Well, speaking of, oh, thank you for uh, throwing, <laughs> throwing that softball in the air. Uh, LG put out a new video today with a little bit more of a closer look at the LG Gwatch or G-Watch. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think when I first saw the G-Watch, especially side-by-side -side with the Moto uh, 360, I thought it looked, you know, kind of cheap and plasticky and, eh, I don't know, much of this, much like the same. And though I still feel like it, you know, in, in a squarish slash rectangular, rectangular sort of sense, it does look like watches that we've seen before. Yeah. It definitely has a more premium look to it the more that, that LG's putting out there, I suppose, uh, they can paint it in that in that sort of way in their promotional materials, right. but but it's it looks like a nice watch. I'm very curious to see uh, see how it's received uh, once it comes out. We see the connector on the back, the wire, kind of the. Uh, it's not going to need to be plugged in, obviously, with a USB. It's it's got the contacts on mm -hmm. the back, so that you can probably set it on some sort of charger. Yeah, the uh, interesting that's... thing about this video was it was all about design. Which normally, you know, that's like Apple's territory, maybe even a little bit of Samsung's territory. But I don't think of LG when I think of like, it's an HTC definitely. I think with the the M8, the design is great. Mm -hmm. But you don't really think of when I think of like high, you know, really nice design. I don't think of LG. So I wonder if they're trying to break the the barrier a little bit here because they didn't talk about functionality at all, except for the mm -hmm. little thing they had with the oh your your planes on time or something. Mm -hmm. But they don't really talk about any any functionality in that video it's just all doesn't this look cool and we can make cubes spin around and connect with lines <laughs> so you know for me i was like well that's pretty cool i mean it looks it looks maybe like it's a little thinner than some of the other watches that are out there right now it's hard to tell but what does it actually do um besides just tell me time and tell me if my flight's on time water and dust resistant important for a watch so it's, I mean, it's got to inspire lust because it's an accessory, right? Yeah, I mean, it's an yeah. accessory. It's not a thing that you need to function, which yeah, is something, good point. something that the smartphone has become, right? You, you need to want to wear it because it's a fashion statement mm -hmm. versus fun functionality. I mean, basically, it's going to do everything that your that your phone does, just on a, sm a diff smaller, different interface and maybe a little bit more convenient. So that they have to sell it on style, I think. Mm -hmm. I agree. And design. Uh, and then, oh, and then they announced, but didn't really give a whole lot of details on their new G-Pad line of tablets, 7, 8, and 10.1-inch tablets. So we'll probably be seeing more about these tablets uh, coming soon. But there you go. If you're an LG fan, what, I mean, LG's more and more, I feel like we're, we're talking about LG on the show and hearing, hearing about it. Obviously, they did the Nexus 5. LG did the Nexus 4. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've got, good, they've got good devices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm Someone actually, con I mean, I hadn't really looked at the G-Pads that much. Um, I think it's an awful name, but the, um, you know, someone actually contacted me, a friend of our family contacted me and said, what do you think about this G-Pad? I can, you know, I'm kind of looking, going back and forth between that and the Nexus 7. And I was like, well, I think you should go with the Nexus 7. But um, after looking at the G-Pad, it looked pretty, pretty compelling. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like a bad little device. So 
Um, I haven't used one personally. I don't know if you guys have used one, but um, I'm more of a Nexus kind of guy. Yeah. No, I, I'm not sure that I've played around with a G-pad. Yeah. <laughs> I, hope that, I hope that I have not reviewed a G-pad in the episodes past, but I did a search before the show because I was like, man, have I tested an LG G-pad before? And I couldn't find it. Right. And that's about as good as my memory is these days as Google. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, and then glass news. <laughs> By the way, before we move on, if uh, if we all end up getting Android Wear devices, uh, man, this show's going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, it's going to get yeah. longer and longer. We're going to have glass section. We're going to have Android Wear section. Yeah. Oh, boy. There's so many angles to Android these days. It's crazy. It's also what I love about Android. Uh, yeah. But what's what's up with glass? Well, I guess the that first sale went pretty well for Google because they're opening up Glass again for sale to the public. Um, they're calling it a more open beta. So you got to live in the U.S., you got to <laughs> be willing open. to spend 1500 bucks, uh, and you have to be willing to put up with the Explorer edition, which Google said is a prototype and early preview and all that. Uh, but if you're game, go to google.com slash glass, and you can buy a pair, and you'll also get a free set of the Titanium Collection frames if you if you buy a pair. And Google says that the sale will be open as long as they have uh, glass in stock. So, you know, kind of an open thing. So anybody can be an explorer anybody at this point. Anybody in the U.S., I believe? In the, yeah, anybody in the U.S. Okay. And who's got 1500 bucks laying <laughs> around. That's Speaking probably of, the bigger limitation. Yeah, yeah 1500 bucks. Well, yeah, I was joking with Christina Warren on, on, on Twitter. She was, she was like, a more open beta, $1,500 an open beta. Ha ha. And I was like, open to rich people. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, that $1,500 price tag was was on purpose. Um, some of the Google folks were saying that they purposely priced Glass high because they wanted people who really, really, really wanted it. Um, Recode, was it Recode that did the teardown? I don't think we talked about this on last week's show. Or maybe it was, uh, sorry, it was teardown.com. Right. Did a teardown of the Glass hardware and found that uh, its parts, estimated that its parts are worth about $80. Um, so we're looking at a pretty big markup. I mean, even if teardown.com was, was off by double, you know, even if it was <laughs> double what they, their estimation, uh, Google's really did mark up, mark up glass a lot. So, you yeah, know, there's that. I think, I think we can expect to see once glass becomes a consumer product, if glass ever becomes a consumer product, that the price will be a lot lower. I, at least I hope. So when, here's what I have a hard time working through. So $1,500 now means that glass is not going to be a consumer product soon, uh, anytime soon. They're basically yeah. opening it up for anyone to pay $1,500 now. Um, so is this the wider release that they were talking about for, that, that we keep hearing about for 2014? Or is there going to be an even wider, much less expensive release of this by the end of the year, in which case... It seems so close to now when you're spending fifteen hundred dollars. I don't know. Something just doesn't add up for me. Yeah, yeah. I kind of wish as far as the cost of this device and and what it what it actually means to get a wider release and still be less expensive. I don't think they both happen. I feel like fifteen hundred dollars is pretty close to what it costs. And right. That's just the way it's going to be. I right. Don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like you feel like screaming, like, "What are you waiting for? Throw it over the fence! You know, right. give it to us." Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I kind of wish that they would um, go ahead and either release it or say, you know, this is never going to be a thing because right. they're kind of stuck in this middle ground. I know that they're doing a lot of research and work on it to try to refine it and all this, but it's like, what's the, is the end product even going to look anything like glass? Will there ever be a consumer grade product for this, for this wondering. thing? I mean, I just, I just don't know if we're ever going to get there at this point. And I know sometimes you can get into analysis paralysis when you're developing products like this. It's happened at companies I've worked for before where you just keep iterating, iterating, iterating. Eventually, you have to throw it over the fence. And Gina, you know this as a developer, right? I mean, you get to a point yeah. where it's like, here's the milestone. I've I've hit it. Yes, there's other things I want to do, but we've got to throw it over the fence and, and let people use it. We can't just keep making it better, making it better infinity, right? Mm-hmm. Well, well, Google can. Right? Google I mean, can, but I mean, they shouldn't. You know, right. Well, right. I mean, when you're a small company with a limited budget, at some point you have to say, I'm putting this out in the market and it's either a viable product or it's not. Right. But Google has a lot more leeway for that kind of thing. I mean, I think I mean, they obviously want more explorers. Um, they're obviously collecting data. I mean, they're, they're pushing down updates to, to, to Glass uh, at a really good pace. Uh, really good pace. I mean, they're definitely taking feedback and updating the software. Uh, it seems like, I mean, they're definitely putting resources toward this, which makes you feel like this is going to be something somewhere. Or maybe this is just all research for Android Wear. 
Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But the fact that they're calling this a more o- an open beta, more open beta, and it's still fifteen hundred, that it, it doesn't seem like the wider release yeah. they yeah. may have been talking about, but. Maybe this was a reckoning. Maybe they're like, you know what? This isn't going to happen in 2014. Maybe it's not going to happen at all. So let's yeah. just let anybody who let let's let the enthusiasts who really still want it uh, have it, right? And how many people out there, you know, are there out there that really really want glass? I mean, I, I feel like in a way, this is this is the this is the Achilles heel of the of the of the beta testing period is that the hype the hype cycle gets elongated and right. then there's backlash before it even comes out, right? Right. And we've seen a lot of that with glass and. But you know, I think I think Google knows enough now that that's that that's how it, how it goes. Um, but but contrast this to other beta. You know, contrast this just to say like the Gmail the Gmail release back in two thousand five. I know I'm going back a, a while ago, but that was invite only. It was a tremendous product. Everybody wanted it. People were selling invites on eBay. It was amazing. Everyone loved it, and people still love Gmail. I mean, Glass was nothing like that, right? And people thought it was cool, and then you know, the idea of it, but then, you know, there was just a tremendous amount of either meh or this is insane. Mm -hmm. Um, This is never going to happen. So, I mean, at this point, I mean, I've thought up just in the past few months, I've thought up a couple apps that I think would be really good for, for glass, but I'm not sure I even want to take a step in that direction right now. And I'm wondering if other developers are going to have that issue as well, right? Like, you know, you want, at some point as a developer, you want to know that the product's going to be viable before yes. you commit resources right. to developing stuff. And and that's where, Definitely. I mean, I'm not a big developer or anything, but I thought, oh, this would be cool. This would be cool. And I kind of want to throw those by you guys at some point, see if maybe it already exists. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, but you know, I, I, I just think that they're, they could be hurting themselves when it comes to developers. If this is going to be a product, they need to let developers know that it's going to be a product. It's going to be affordable for consumers so that they'll want to develop really cool apps for the device. Mm-hmm. Um, Otherwise, it's just going to be, like I said, stuck in limbo, I think, um, yeah. until they get I mean, there. I, I think the advantage for developers developing Glassware right now and even developing against the Android Wear SDK is I, I think we all agree that wearables in some form or another are definitely the future. And this is like ground floor level zero, you know, just, just getting your feet wet, getting an understanding of what these different voice, you know, responsive and small screen interfaces, you know, what they're like and how they work into your app. So I, I actually don't think if a developer puts in the time to make a glassware app right now is wasting, you know, her time, right? Like, or his time, like it's, 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 it's educational. I just don't know that they're, you know, that, that, that app, the glassware app is going to be, you know, the, 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 the thing that makes or breaks your business at this point. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's, it, but it's a good experience in a, in a very, very new platform. Yeah. That's interesting. All right. Well, we'll see where glass evolves to. Uh, speaking of glass, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, but go to my Google Plus page. Yeah, that's awesome. And see my daughter take her first steps on on uh, glass. That's so cool. It was a pretty nice. awesome experience, uh, particularly because I was home. I had to call in uh, to work and take the day off because she was not feeling well. Oh. And then turns out she had plans. So uh, <laughs> pretty cool stuff. That is awesome. Yeah, it was, awesome. it was really cool. It was, I totally lucked out. I was like, man, I feel it. I feel like if I put them on right now and, and talk her through it, she's going to do it. And she totally did. So uh, uh, pretty sweet. <laughs> there it is. Oh. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yeah, you can probably see. Here we go. Here we go. I want the bunny. She wants the bunny. She wants the bunny. She's going for it. Come on, Dad. Yeah, give me the bunny. Like, give me the bunny. Give me the bunny. You can tell she's sick, kind of. Yeah, oh, she was totally yeah. melting there at the beginning of the thing. I was like, this isn't going to work. I was like, come on, you take the it. step. Yeah, okay. Oh, hey, those are steps. Okay, here you can have it. And then she just like blew me away with like 10 more steps. I was like, oh, wait a minute. You're, you're still walking. Okay. Oh, my and gosh. Yeah, she's totally standing Now I'm you know. going to the mall, Dad. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. Jason, that is so, incredible. I'm so glad that you caught it on glass. That's no, amazing. I know. I, I feel very happy because I really wanted this to be the case, you know. And honestly, this is what this is one of the reasons that Leo ended up gifting me glass. Uh, yeah. He said, you know, you have a kid. This is perfect for you. And I'll, I'll be completely honest. I make no qualms about the fact that the thing I use glass for primarily and probably only for these days is for using it for the video and photo capabilities of it. And that's not that doesn't necessarily I would I don't say that feature in and of itself is worth fifteen hundred dollars. Right. But when you have it and that happens, yeah. you capture yeah. your, your daughter, you know, take her first steps and she's connecting with me. She's not connecting with the black slab that I'm holding between us. Um, yes. Then you're like, okay, that's magical. Yeah, like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. 
I love it. I don't yeah. know if it's $1,500 awesome, but I'm really happy I had them at that point. <laughs> so I'm so glad. That's, so, that's awesome. I'm so glass, glad you caught that. Glass may have its faults, but it also has some really good upside to it. So <laughs> and how many go. people have their first steps uh, documented that way? I know, right? right? right. Yeah, like nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I was happy with it. So you're going to love you or hate you for it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she'll enjoy it. So. Well, she was wearing she was wearing clothes, so right, she won't. Yes. You right know, out of the gate. It yeah. could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I mean, my kids always hate me when I bring up the ones that, you know, Oh, look, you were so cute. And they're like, Dad. <laughs> uh, let's take another break and thank another sponsor of today's episode. And that is Lamtronics. Uh, whether you're at the home or the office and you're printing from your Android device, Chromebooks, even the Kindle Fire, it can be a challenge. I know I've tried to print from uh, my devices and just kind of, you know, figured like it can't be done because it's just such a, a pain in the neck. Uh, and if your printer isn't already cloud print enabled, well, you're out of luck. And that's the case for me. I know at home I have a printer. It's a dumb printer uh, from years ago. And it's, it's definitely not cloud print enabled, uh, Google cloud print enabled. Um, so, you know, I've just basically assumed that you know, printing from my mobile device is uh, is a no go. It's a non starter. Well, X Print Server, Google uh, Cloud or Google Cloud Print Edition, uh, is kind of the answer here. It's an easy easy to set up, easy to use solution for Google Cloud Print enabled devices. It allows wireless and mobile printing from Chromebook computers, Android phones, and tablets even the Kindle Fire, and it works with a printer you already own, whether it's wired or wireless, USB, network. Uh, it, it works with your printer, likely. Then you got the USB, uh, sorry, the USB, the Ethernet. And uh, what's even cooler is when it's pl all plugged in and working, that X shines bright to, to let you know that it's working. It's the first and only print server officially certified by Google for cl uh, cloud print and Android printing. You can print to your existing printers. There's no need to buy a new one. It's compatible with over 4,000 top brand printers. Very easy to use. It has an automatic discovery and setup of printers. You just open it, plug it in, and print. And there's advanced configuration available through its web interface. One X Print server supports multiple printers and virtually unlimited Android devices that can connect to it. It allows your USB printers to be shared with all users over a network, which is just awesome. It's great for your home, great for your office. It even works with large multifunction printers. Cloud Print Edition is $149.95 and supports up to 10 network printers and eight USB printers simultaneously. Super powerful little device. That'd here. be good for a small office. Absolutely yeah. would. Uh, visit xprintserver.com slash twit for more information and to buy. And we've got a special offer if you use the code twit to receive free shipping on your order. That's all you got to do. Use the code twit. Remember, xprintserver.com slash twit. And at the checkout, uh, enter the code twit. And we thank Landtronics for support of All That Android with their xprint server. Check it out. We hope that you will. All right, let's get into the apps. Well, that land print server was certainly awesome. Mm -hmm. You know what else is awesome? Auto Awesome from yeah. Google+. Plus. Uh, there was some big news. Well, big news for me. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, that came out uh, just yesterday, actually, from the, the... It's actually combined from the Maps team and from the uh, Google Plus Auto Awesome team, the folks that give you all those really cool enhancements that you like to see when you upload your photos to Google+. Plus. This one is um, new, and they can take a a panorama. Um, this comes from Evan uh, Rappaport, who's actually a product manager on the uh, Maps team, I believe. Um, and he points out that you can now take a, a, a panorama picture, 360 degree panorama picture. And as an auto awesome feature, it will automatically give you another version of that, which is a photosphere uh, version of that photo. So, you know, if your camera, if you have a nice camera, but it doesn't necessarily support photosphere because photosphere is really built into the uh, Android camera app at this point, or you can work for the Maps team and carry one of those big backpack things around or drive one of their cars. Um, but this way you can do it with your normal, you know, DSLR camera that supports 360 degree panorama photos. You just take your photo, upload it to Google Plus, and if it's compatible, it'll automatically go ahead and make that, turn that into Photosphere. Oh, um, awesome. So yeah, so this is really, really cool. And you can even view those through Google Maps. If you go into the views section of Google Maps, you go to Maps and then click on Views. 
um, it'll show you a lot of different um, uh, photosphere from all around the world. Um, yeah, and you can see cool the ones that you take plus the ones that other people take as well. Um, so I just thought that was kind of a cool little thing that, um, that just came out yesterday. And um, unfortunately for those of us that, you know, it's not really going to work, I don't think, from most – Unless the new camera app supports 360 degree panoramas, I know mine. I'm still on an older version of Android with an older version of the camera, and it doesn't support 360 degrees. It supports like I don't even think it's 180. It might be 180. Um, so you, but in that case, you can just do it right from your phone anyway because you've got Photosphere built in, so you don't even need it. But um, some of those really high quality Photospheres of those landmarks and stuff are really really cool. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so check it out if you've got a camera that supports those 360 degree panoramas. Um, play with it. See if it actually picks it up and does the uh, auto awesome uh, photosphere mode. I love auto awesome. It's I do too. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, every once in a while, the smile thing is weird, but other than that, it's awesome. Oh yeah, where it tries to take yeah. match up the, the the person with the <laughs> best. They did that. It did pretty, that recently. Pretty funny results. Sometimes. I got that last this past weekend when when my uh, I was taking some pictures of my daughter playing the trumpet. And, you know, I took several pictures and nobody was smiling, right? There was a bunch of kids all playing their instruments. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, we, you know, enhance this by picking the best smile. And I'm like, wait a second. And there was no, <laughs> there was no smiling involved. Everybody was, you know, playing an instrument. So uh, it came out a little weird. Somebody was like a little off in the background. It didn't, it didn't look right at <laughs> that, all. Yeah, that, that's one of them. That, that's one of the auto awesome features that either works really well yeah, or doesn't or work. Or really at all. doesn't work. Yeah. It's pretty obvious when it doesn't work. Yep. So, Brian, you were looking at that map to see if there were any uh, any photospheres in Petaluma. Did you, did you notice that there were none? Uh, actually, there are a couple. It just looks like people who made them public on their Google Plus account. So there was one. Let me just research Petaluma. I was here. just going to say we need to get people to work. Because uh, I, <laughs> I yeah. knew that uh, we had done something in Petaluma for Twit. But, like, so this one popped up, and this is Lagunitas. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this was just on the map when I zoomed out from Petaluma. So, oh, cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. So it we, looks like wherever you, if you share it publicly and right. you tag the location, it uploads and you can search it through maps. And yeah. that one's that one's 360. Yeah, this one's yeah, a, yeah. That's cool. Cool. We need to get to work and blanket Petaluma with. Uh, <laughs> I'll work on it. All right. Document it. <laughs> Homework. Fun. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, speaking of camera, actually, the Google Camera app did get an update. This is a really quick hit right here, but. Uh, brought the ability, brought back the ability to take pictures while you're shooting video, which brings up an interesting question that I found online. People either love the tap to take a picture while shooting video, or they would prefer to have the tap to focus while you're shooting a video. Where do we where do we land on this? Gina, what do you say? Have we, have we ever had tap to focus during I don't, video? I, you know what? I don't know if it was ever in stock, but it's on other versions of like uh, other, uh, you know, like camera HTC, apps. yeah, yeah. Sense, camera app. Stuff, I've right? got a one-year-old, so to me, tap to take a picture during video is is definitely my preference. I'm always yeah. taking video of her, and the minute that she looks up, smiles, I'll tap it and, and take the picture. I, yeah. I definitely prefer that. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I even have that functionality on um, on my uh, my new Samsung camera, my point and shoot camera that I take with me. I've got that functionality, and it's really great because. Um, you know, before you were just relying, and a lot of times before the video resolution was so bad, yeah, they, and sometimes you want still to it's so it. bad, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't want to take a picture, but now the resolution's so nice, it's like, you know, oh, I want to capture that little moment there, but not interrupt your video in the process. And I, I think that's great. And mm -hmm. and it should autofocus anyway, right? I mean, it should be continuous autofocus while you're taking the, the video. I think that's the preference. Yeah. Have it continuous autofocus on its own and then be able to tap to take the picture. Yeah, I think that may be where the Nexus 5 falls flat sometimes because the autofocus, anyone that has the Nexus 5 will, t will tell you that the autofocus is one of the downsides mm. of the camera. It really is pretty wonky. It's pretty unpredictable. Sometimes it'll lock right away. Sometimes sometimes I'll, I'll turn on the video camera and everything's just blurry. And no matter what I do, it never locks anything. It just Ooh. stays blurry until I turn it off, turn off the screen, turn it back on, unlock, and then it'll like kick mm. it in. So in that regard, yeah, it would be nice to be able to trigger yeah. a, you know. If only there was a way for us to to compare all the different cameras and the various uh, capabilities. <laughs> That's that a really offer. good point. Uh, well, it's funny that you say that. Oh. Funny that you say that, Aaron. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you did just that. Uh, phone reader did a blind. 
test of best photos taken on a bunch of different devices. So Phone Arena posts a bunch of photos from the Galaxy S5, Sony Xperia Z1, the Oppo Find 7A, the iPhone 5S, the Huawei Ascend P7, the HTC One M8, and the LG G2, and ask their readers to vote on what were the best photos. Well, the Galaxy S5 uh, won the by, by far, I believe. Yeah, the G Galaxy S5 were, came out on top with the Xperia Z1 right behind it, and my beloved M8 way toward the bottom there. <laughs> way toward the bottom 4.5 4. percent uh, of the vote really Whereas unfortunate for a phone that was really touting the camera capabilities you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yes yeah. yeah i had a long philosophical discussion with a friend of mine who was also a dad who like wanted to get an android phone is really mostly an iphone guy and was like should i get the m8 people are telling me the camera is not good i'm nervous you know i'm not like a fancy photographer but like i do want my kids to look good and i was like it's good enough for me uh but it's not the best out there yeah. So great, uh, pr pretty cool. Uh, I like the blind comparison. Yeah, and they did like daytime pictures, nighttime pictures. They did a nighttime mm -hmm. picture, but a nighttime picture that looked like it had some punchy light still. Yeah, like the, yeah. the picture that I want, the one that I want on these photo comparisons is like low light room. Right. You're right. in, you're in a room or you're in a bar or something like right, that with friends right. and yep. you're taking pictures because yep. that's where you really see the the low light. But although that that looks nice, but they all kind of look pretty decent in that because you've got enough of that foreground yeah, light yeah. to punch through yeah. the darkness. Yeah. So it's dark. That's not, but I it's agree. Not that's totally not really dark. a low light picture. No, it's would, not at all. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But uh, still, very interesting. Uh, Galaxy S5 comes out on top on that, and I would have expected uh, just because I'm so used to hearing that the iPhone, you know, five mm -hmm. and iPhone cameras have always mm -hmm. been so great uh, that it would have scored higher. But yeah, I think they used to be. I mean, I, I would even have to agree, you know, back a couple years ago, you know, I, I would never fight that argument. I would always say, yeah, you're right. You know, the camera's better on the iPhone because as mm -hmm. it was, you could take a look at the pictures. It was. Mm -hmm. um, but now, I mean, they've just made a lot of improvements, both to the hardware and to the apps that are taking the pictures. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've i still got my Galaxy S4 and it takes great pictures. Sometimes I get better pictures on that than I do from my point and shoot. So um, mm -hmm. interesting days we live in. Yep. Yeah, when, when it, back when I was uh, on on iPhone, I I kind of liked the camera. It just seemed less fiddly. Like there were just less fewer settings, which which is what I want. I don't have to think about. It. I just want the camera to know what to do and take the best picture. And right. I think that the Google camera particularly has come very far in that regard. I don't mess with the settings much at all anymore. I just whip it out and take a picture. Yeah. And that's what I really liked about the iPhone is that I would generally get good good photos that way. And now I think that that Android's really caught up. Uh, yeah, Google Camera, by the way, love it. Like, I've yeah. really yeah. enjoyed using it. Any of the complaints that I've had in previous versions of, of Android stock camera, mm -hmm. uh, most of them are, are pretty much disappeared. They've got the UI down to simple yet effective enough. Um, I don't know. I, I'm really happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Really useful. And then we have an email. Do you want to take it or you want me to take I it? I can take it. All right. Uh, so this is an email that came in from a fan. Yeah, Marlon, uh, the guy from Trinidad. Marlon from Big Trinidad. Uh, he says, hi, best post hi, best podcasting crew on the whole, can I say that? Sure. The whole damn internet. <laughs> Yay, yeah, we'll, we'll take that. Uh, yeah, it's a thousand already. That's right. <laughs> it's Marlon from the guy from Trinidad here. And I want to make the case for uh, All About Android promoting more All About Android. Read that, or more AAA, I guess. Read that as AAA. More AAA games on the show. Recently, we had two major games come over from iOS to Android. The Walking Dead, tell Ron it's okay to promote his company's properties. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my favorite games on the PC, XCOM Enemy Unknown. Yesterday, we also saw the launch on NVIDIA Shield, I did see this, of two exclusive and beloved titles, Half-Life 2, yay, and Portal, yay. These are award-winning games. They look fantastic and are not cheap. Around $10 each and are not small, between 1 gig and 3 gig. It's, uh, it also pushes the two major OSs closer together in terms of offering, shortening the release times, uh, but this trend is to continue. If this trend is to continue, we have to promote these titles and purchase them. Um, I know that anytime a major release happens on iOS, it's covered on iPad today. Just think what you could do if you did the same for Android. Now these <laughs> apps may be covered in Jason's new show that is still coming soon, in air quotes. If that's the case, I can't wait. Uh, love the show, Marlon, as we said, the guy from Trinidad. Yeah. Oh, Marlon, keeping us honest, calling us out. Yeah. I like it. Mar Marlon's good like that. He'll, <laughs> yeah. he'll always keep us honest. What do you guys think about that, though? I mean, um, should we be promoting? Well, no, I, 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 I don't I, think we have a... I don't think we don't promote 
them, right? No, I think the point just being that Android, as far as games is, is concerned, is coming is more and more coming into its own, and we're and we're actually finally seeing yeah. some of these AAA titles right. make it to the Android platform. I mean, as as far as us covering them on the show versus not, I think I think we cover what we cover, and yes, I'm sure on my Android. Uh, app show that is still coming soon. I promise it's coming. It's just taking longer than I anticipated. Um, I'm going to, you know, have episodes where I focus on, on, you know, just for example, AAA game titles. You know, right. maybe bring three or four of them on and feature them, uh, something along those lines. But you know, we get to them when we get to them. But I understand what you're saying, Marlon. Uh, I, I understand that you think that we have that <laughs> enough influence that if we feature it on the show, it might it might you know make that much of an impact. But uh, it is it is true that the more we buy games like this, the more we entice others to bring AAA titles to the platform. And I think that's kind of also happening in itself yeah, right now, in right. the sense that. Android just is becoming a, a bigger deal. It's, right. You know, it's yeah. way more in the in the spotlight now than it was even a year ago. Right. More things are being developed for Android first these days as opposed to, to um, iPhone or iPad first. So, and that's just because there's more users out there. So, again, we, we talked about this earlier. As a developer, you want to reach out to as many users as possible, as easy as possible. So... Um, we're seeing more of these companies that are that are developing. In fact, I always find it weird if something comes out for for iPhone or, or iPad first. I'm like, why? Why? Is there some sort of special hook into the platform that doesn't exist on Android? Like, why would you develop for, for iPhone or iPad first, except maybe you just don't have the right developers to develop for Android or something? So, um, yeah, it should be the way that, you know, we should see this more and more um, uh, ongoing is that people develop for Android platform first. I suppose also it depends on what you call uh, you qualify as AAA titles. Mm -hmm. Are AAA games games that were on a console at one point and now are being you know ported over? Somebody in the chat room was like, "What are you talking about? These are re-releases. That's not interesting." And I right. suppose to a certain degree that's true because when did Portal when did Portal get released? That was like a long time 2007, ago. right? Right. Right. Uh, some, yeah, something something like game. that. Yeah, it's an and old game. And is the story that it's it, it, it's it's on mobile? Does that does that? <sighs> Like, I wonder if the story sort of loses, or the, the wind comes out of the sails when it's, you know, on iOS. So it's like, okay, people are playing this on their, on their you know, their touchscreen devices. And then whatever, months later, it's like, oh, yeah, and it's on Android too. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. I think it, it might just get a little a little less. And I and I appreciate Marlon pointing this out. It might get less media attention because it's like, oh, yeah, now, and now Android too. For the titles that are showing up on iOS first, it's still happening. It's still yeah. happening quite a bit. I mean, when, you know, when everybody was talking about Secret uh, and those, like, the, those kinds of apps, I mean, I took out my iPhone. I was like, I want to try this, right? Because it's not on Android yet. There's still a few apps that I'm like, oh, I read about them and I can't get them on my Android phone. So I'll, I'll you know, I'll grab the iPad or whatever just to try them out so it is still happening and and that and that story of like oh this has been out forever you know dots was out forever on ios okay we finally got on android i was really thrilled but it also felt like all my friends have been playing this for a year right. it's kind of old news um but i think we should make a bigger deal and i think we should actually really celebrate the companies that do go android first yeah mm -hmm. or, or at least simultaneous right because what i think is cool is when developers develop something like space team um or an app like that that is actually cross-platform that you can play and come out right out of the gate. And, yeah, and it's multiplayer, and it's, it doesn't matter what you run it on, right? You can run it on tablets, you can run it on yes. iOS, you can run it on Android, it doesn't matter. You know, and I know it takes a little bit more work to do that, but developers, if you're watching, more of that. We need more of that. We need it to be um, platform agnostic to a certain, because especially if it's multiplayer, I want to be able to play with my my friends that are, you know, that do have iPhones. And so that's what I really look for. That always impresses me when something comes out and it's multi-platform day one. It's like, Wow they really put the effort into making this usable and playable by everybody. More and more, more pressure on developers because uh, at some point, we're, you know, people are going to be saying the same thing about Windows Phone, right? Mm. It's like, you know, these these games, they're coming out on iOS and Android, but they really need to come out on iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure on a development team. I mean, if, if there's if there's demand for yeah. it, then... Right. Fair yeah, enough. I don't think Fair we enough. could say that there is demand right now. <laughs> right now. Um, and so much that I hear about Windows Phone right now reminds me of uh, yes, talk yes. about Android At, in, the, in the early ago. days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Five years ago. Yep. Uh, Brian Burnett says Half-Life 2 came out in 2004, but it's still cool to see it on a mobile device. Yeah. That is cool. It was and, just the year that I graduated from high school, so oh. <laughs> yeah, a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're wow. going to have to get an NVIDIA Shield old. in order to play it. I, I so feel even older than you, Gina. Old. 
<laughs> I thought you were going to say college, and then oh. you said high school. It's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> but I am I'm anticipating the new Half Life to come out. Never, so it's neat to see that it's re-releasing on Android. Hey, At least see, there's that. Yeah. It sounds like you're a fellow Half Life fan, Brian. Did you see the uh, the infographic that came out around Half Life Three? <laughs> yes. Like, how many people have died? Four hundred million. Four hundred million people have died waiting for Half Life Three to come out. <laughs> that blood is on your hands, Gabe. That's right. It's on your hands. <laughs> that was funny. Sorry, digress. <laughs> that's all right. Where'd that uh, rabbit go? I don't. Yeah, that's a good. Good. Uh, let's thank our our third and final sponsor of today's episode. That would be Prosper. If you knew that in seventy two hours you'd have thirty five thousand dollars to cover your needs, what would you do? Would you pay off high rate credit cards? Uh, would you start a business? Uh, do that home improvement project that you've been putting off or that you've just been waiting for the money to suddenly appear magically in front of your face. Uh, all you have to do is fill out an easy online application, provide a few details, and you'll see a rate online almost instantly. Prosper offers low fixed rates, unsecured personal loans. That's no collateral required and has multi-year terms available. Uh, so, you know, for folks like me with a house that needs a new heater, although we're going in the summer, so it doesn't need a new heater. But you know what it does need? It needs an air conditioner. Uh, so, you know, maybe maybe I just take care of all of it in one fell swoop and use Prosper to get that money. Prosper is Silicon Valley's answer to personal loans. Prosper's innovative peer-to-peer -peer lending process. There are no outrageous fees, no raising interest rates, and you'll never set foot in a bank. That right there is awesome. Prosper has more than 2 million members, lenders and borrowers, and over $1 billion in funded loans. And it's peer-to-peer -peer lending, so, uh, you know, it's, it's distributed funding of your loan, uh, taking everything that you know about P2P services online, file sharing, streaming, uh, you know, streaming your media, apply, apply that to the financial world, and uh, it's basically the same thing here. Peers are lending that money to you, thanks to Prosper. Uh, just go to prosper.com slash twit to check your rate instantly without affecting your credit score. For limited time, Prosper is offering twit viewers a $50 Amazon.com gift card when you get a loan. Go to prosper.com slash twit. That's a special site just for our viewers. Up to $35,000 in just three days. Receive a $50 Amazon.com gift card when you get a loan. Prosper.com is not affiliated with Amazon. For gift card details, visit prosper.com slash twit. And we thank Prosper for their continued support of All About Android. Prosper. All right, let's do it. Android Arena time. Mm. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Boom. Boomstick. Uh, arena. Uh, arena. Last week's episode. Let's see here. I have not looked at the results here. Uh, whoa. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Voxbox came out ahead. I didn't expect that. 42%. Boom. Nice going. Nice going. Yeah. Although I did hear from some people. They were like, I heard the sugar one too. There probably aren't that many <laughs> audio <laughs> clips <laughs> floating around. Uh, it could have been that I took the risk of, uh, you know, getting the show taken off the air because of who knows what was going to play <laughs> when I hit play on VoxBox. And, yeah, though we weren't removed, I did have we did have to censor it. Brian, you uh, you did the edit last week, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, just Thanks, a little Brian. bleep. It's okay. Just a little beep, yeah. yeah. It's it's intriguing. I'm sure <laughs> if, if you heard the sugar one, then you probably heard that one, too. So you heard it in its <laughs> unedited form. So that was 42% of the votes. Notify with 27%. Gina, that was yours, right? That was mine, yep. Awesome. Notography or notography, 16% was Ron's. And then on Endomundo uh, Sports Tracker with 14%. So there we go. All right, so that means that, Gina, you are up first, and I have your app installed on my Nexus 5. I'll show it off. All right, cool. So my app pick this week, brand new app from Yahoo, Yahoo News Digest. Uh, this is official, official Yahoo app. Really, really, really nice app. The, pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. All this does is it gives you the top stories, top news stories of the day, twice a day. So in the morning and at night. Uh, I think I get mine at eight, yeah, eight a.m. and six p.m. And uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. 
<laughs> Jason, you're swiping through. Basically, Yahoo just checks the news, does a summary of what the news is, and puts these amazing graphics. And you just you get this very simple digest. I think it's like eight stories or ten stories. Yes, there you go, Jason. There's your first digest. You're just scrolling through under different categories: technology, world, U.S. news, business, etc. There are different editions. So if you're international, you can choose um, you can choose you know to not be in the U.S. I think that there's U.K. and a few other. You swipe, yeah, you swipe left to right to go from story to story, read the stories. The stories are actually pretty short. They're summaries um, with key quotes, kind of, um, yeah, really beautiful transitions there. You can yeah. see when you scroll up and slide side to side. And I have to say, I really, I really like what they're doing here. The summaries are short and to the point. They make you feel informed. You get a notification if you want. You can opt out in settings at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. when you have a new digest. It basically just gives you the updates to stories throughout the day. Oh, yeah, that Alec Baldwin story is kind of funny. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you can scroll up. And it's got, you know, if you want to watch videos or see related tweets, you can do that. Um, but even if you just want to just skim and be like, just tell me, you know, tell me what I need to know. Um, and then once you scroll through all the stories, it'll tell you how many you read out of how many it gave you. And then, um, yeah, you've read, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it tells you, and then you can say, Hey, I want more news. So if you're on, you know, if you're on your commute, if you're on the bus or the train or whatever, and you want to see more, you can go ahead and do that. And it's just really well designed. It does what Yahoo does very well, which is just summarizes content and shows you the most interesting stuff in a kind of nice layout. And um, it just kind of easy and single purpose. If you go into settings, there are a couple of things you can do to customize. Let me get in here. Uh, you can choose a different edition. Let's go into the settings. Uh, yeah, you can choose a different edition. So you can say, I'm in the UK, I'm in Canada, international, um, and you can turn off notifications if you don't want to get the push notification when you have a new digest. And that's basically it. Just news stories or pretty pictures, and you can skip or swipe through and uh, just keep it on top, top of the news. Nice work from Yahoo. It's totally free. And I think it just came out this week. Yeah, very nice design. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Beautiful design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you yeah, say you could choose? Did you say you could choose the topics, or is it you just get the default? You just get. I believe you just get the default. I don't think that you customize the topics. There's not. Let's see. More digest. It's like world oh, pol oh, politics, just, yeah. technology, world. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just, just the top preset, stories. It's just top stories of, of preset categories. So there's not mm. a whole lot of customization here. Um, but this, you know, the interface is so nice that you can you can quickly scroll through, and if you you know see something you know you're not interested, in, you just skip it. And you can ask for more news if you want. Um, they've got this crazy timer thing. Like if you say, you know, what you know, when's my next digest? It'll give you a countdown to when the next. <laughs> <laughs> I, which just seems like they're just showing off uh, <laughs> at that point. Um, uh, but yeah, just just kind of a, a very oh yeah, next, beautiful, next digest in. news app. Yeah, in 10 hours or something. Can you go um, back I, in time and see digests for previous days? Oh, yeah, you can. Ah, yeah. Yeah, you can. So if you go to your digests, it'll give you this down here, and you can go to whatever date in the, in the, his, in the past, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cool. And there also is a widget, which I'm seeing on the Play Store page, which I have not tried myself. Um, but it looks like there's a widget that shows you sort of the, the cards um, of the stories. So you can kind of get a preview of them as well. Cool stuff. Yeah. Go just, Yahoo. Just, uh, yeah, go Yahoo. Yahoo News. Been a long time since I've uh, <laughs> checked out Yahoo <laughs> I News. Know, I know. Yeah, me right? too. <laughs> When's the last time you read Yahoo News? But this is the thing. I'm going to start reading Yahoo News again because... You know that this it'll be just because of this app because I'll get a little a little reminder. Yeah. Um. I was I was watching I was watching CNN. I was on a plane this morning watching CNN like kind of through the seats over the shoulder of the person in front of me, and I had no idea what was going on. I was like, I don't know who this Sterling guy is. What is going on? <laughs> and I then I installed this app and was like, oh, now I now I know what's going on in the world. So mm -hmm. Yahoo hey, News Gina? Digest. Check it out. I just wanted to ask you real quick: Have you used uh, Yahoo Weather also? Do you use that app at all? I ha we talked about it on the show. I feel like it was an arena pick at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, very beautiful, like yeah. gorgeous images from Flickr. Uh, really well done. Um, it's not my default weather app, but it's it's quite nice, right? Do you use it, Brian? I do. I use it all the time. Uh, and mm -hmm. yeah, the interface is super slick. So it looks like Yahoo's stepping up the game there. Yeah, I mean, that's what Yahoo has. They have content, right? So if they have content and they can do great design, and if they keep making apps like this, which are like people's everyday go-to tools for simple stuff like weather and news, then I think that's actually a decent strategy. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and uh, you know, who do they have kind of 
working as a senior engineer uh, at Yahoo. They have Jean Baptiste Carreau, who m moved mm -hmm. over from Google, you know, last year. When was it? It was uh, last September. No, it was, it was longer than that. that. It was yeah. like a year and a half ago. Right. Uh, so you know, he, he it has his influence as well, and that's probably one big reason why they they picked him up from Google, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to get yeah, his smarts point. on all this kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Yahoo's paying attention to to Android, and that's that's good. They're doing good things with Android. Uh, a Ron. What you got? Oh, you ready? Sure. Uh, so my app is called, and this is actually interesting that we talked about, you know, AAA. I wouldn't say it's AAA um, app, but it is an app that is a crossover app. So it's, this is actually a game that started, I believe, on um, Armor Games or one of the Flash sites out there, um, and it's called Kingdom Rush. So some of you, if you if you like playing those Flash games, my kids play them all the time. Uh, they go to Armor Games and all the different ones that have the Flash games, but they love playing this game called Kingdom Rush. It's been out for a while. Um, but it's really, really cool. It's a tower defense game. So if you like tower defense games, you're probably going to like this one. Um, and of course it's set, you know, kind of in a medieval type of a environment. Um, the cool thing about this is pretty simple to play, but they give you most tower defense games. You just have the towers, right? Uh, and you put them up and they shoot at what that bad guy's coming. This one actually has like a guard house and, uh, you can actually, so you can actually place guys in the way and the guys fight with the other guys. So, uh, let me bring this up real quick. Um, I've got my audio plugged in and hopefully I've got it turned up. Come on, phone. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can get it. There we go. That's better. Kingdom Rush. So we're going to start this. I'm going to turn up the audio just in case it's not. Uh, it is turned up. There we go. There we you go. Hear it. So the audio is really good. The graphics are really good on this. I like the little characters, the little cartoony characters. Uh, this is where my son's at. He's been playing it actually right now. I'm not going to go through the tutorial, so we'll just bring up wherever he's at. Hopefully he won't get mad at me for playing his save game. Um, uh, so there we go. So it shows you a little map, you know, where you're at, you know, what do you want to um, you can go back and play the, the the games again if you want. This next one's called Twin River Pass, and it t tells you about the campaign. It does have a nice little tutorial when you start it out, so if you're not familiar with tower defense games, you know, you can listen to that music. Isn't that music great? Um, new tower upgrades. Okay. So it has a little comic book feel to it. Um, you can see that uh, you can see how it's it's a little cartoony, but I really actually I kind of like it. Um, so you can just it tells you exactly where you can place your tower. So I'm going to put a archer tower there, and I might put a I might put another tower somewhere else. You know, um, a defense tower maybe or something like that. That gives you little tips so that um, you can see the graphics are just really cool. It gives you a little tip so that if you don't know what you're doing, you know, it kind of gives you hints and guides along the way. Um, so it's and it tells you about all the baddies that are coming in and and all that kind of stuff. So it's really really cool um, and it's pretty easy to go ahead and whoops, to start it. Where's the start? Uh, oh, I did start it. Whoops, quit it. Oh well. Anyway, that's the game. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not having good luck getting it going because I can't do it on the side here. Let's go back to the battle. There we go. I wanted to get the little guys to come in so you could see the little cute guys that come in. All sorts of different. Um, all sorts of different enemies that you can fight. Um, there we go. So there we go. Archer Tower. That's what I want. There it goes. Now it's built. Ready? Ready. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So there's my special guy. They should be coming in here in a second, but maybe not. Um, it's taking them so long. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. See my little guy coming in? My little knight? He's coming in to defend. And you can also set up, let me show you the guard towers real quick. Guard tower. Guard tower. Come on, do it. Ah. Probably a little bit easier to use on it's, a bigger it's tablet. It's easier to use on a bigger tablet. It's actually, it's not bad. I mean, it's kind of hard to see on the on the phone. Um, it's not bad on a phone, though. I can do it on a phone. Um, and the kids the kids will do it either way. They'll do it on a big tablet or on a, yeah. or on a phone. So anyway, it's 99 cents in the store. Uh, there we go. That's better. Thank you, Brian. My technical difficulties here. Um, so you can see what it looks like up close. It's actually really, really fun. Um, and, and I like, like I said, it, it has cartoony kind of graphics, yeah. but it's meant to look that way. So, you know, if you like the medieval kind of knights fighting kind of thing, um, I think you'll really like this game. It's a lot of fun. And, and you can play it for hours and hours. And it's only 99 cents. They have a new version out right now, too. So if you've, maybe you've played this online, maybe you've played the Flash version and you're ready to, to go on to the next level. They've got a new version out. 
um, that you can play as well. So, um, and it's 99 cents as well. So either way, I think it's well worth a buck uh, because you're going to get hours and hours of playtime out of this, and it's just just loads of fun. So. That looks, I, I love the visual style of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's kind of a comic book slash yep. uh, old, school. old school arcade, yep. you know, uh, console type feel and works really well for the phone platform. So fantastic. It's Kingdom Neat. Rush. Nice. Um, I, I Sometimes I see games like that and the fact that they're 99 cents and you get hours of, of gameplay yeah. time out of them. It's like, man, right. the, the economic scale is crazy yeah. in, in the mobile world yeah. that, that you can pay sure. 99 cents for a game that's high enough quality that right. you spend hours and right. hours playing And this it. one, I mean, I should have mentioned too, this one does have some in-store or in-game purchases. Yeah. So some people are like, I don't want to pay 99 cents and then have to get, you know, have to do the in-store purchases as well. But it's not really like that. I mean, it's really for people that want to take shortcuts. Those in-store purchases, at least from my experience, have been for this particular app have been for those people that just want to, you know, get a bunch of money and just buy all this stuff right away and don't really want to play through it to earn the things. So if you, if that's your style, if you like to play through and earn the things, you'll be able to do that. No problem. It's not going to force you to buy anything in app after you, especially after you've paid 99 cents for it. So mm -hmm. don't have to worry about that. Cool. Cool stuff. That is uh, kingdom rush. Uh, I just realized what time it is. I will speed through this app here. Uh, this is called Habit Bowl, and uh, I, I don't know. It's a it's an interesting. It's a great greatly a great design to the to the app. It's a, a way of tracking habits that you want to form. Essentially, it's a way of kind of setting it up on a calendar and saying, Hey, you know what? I want to drink water uh, a lot throughout the day. So if I go into my setup here, drink water. What do I have it set up? I said, so, You know, when is a day successful? When I do something at least five times per day. In this case, it's drink water. I want to have five tall glasses of water per day, and I know that's not even enough. I think I'm supposed to have eight tall mm -hmm. glasses of water per day, but I did five because I got to start somewhere. Uh, I'm really bad at remembering to drink water, and so, you know, this is going to help me do it. You can set, it a, a, set a color code for it, give it kind of a category, and track it. You can also tell the app, in this case, I have it set for every day. You know, every day I want to drink uh, this many glasses of water. You could you could set it up for just some days of the week. So I have another one in here that's like, go to the gym three days a week. These are the days that uh, work for my schedule. So did I go, did I not go? Uh, or number of days per period. So you could say five times per month or five times per year, uh, that sort of thing to track it. And you can set up a reminder time on those days to let you know, hey, you need to do this. Uh, that's what you set it up as. So what you end up with in this case, you can see a little calendar that's kind of tracking my progress throughout throughout the month of drinking enough water. I have not hit my goal any of these days. Uh, I'm just that bad at doing it. Uh, but you can <laughs> but you can take a look and and over the course, I haven't been running this long enough to get a nice, rich kind of graphical uh, presentation of how I'm doing. But it tracks, you know, your streaks, uh, number of attempts. Uh, it kind of tracks it by day and also, you know, just kind of shows you like how close to your value are you getting? That's what you're seeing here, which I like because if I'm not hitting five glasses, you know, per day, what am I hitting? And, you know, I'd love eventually for that to be maxed out essentially is kind of what you're looking at. You can also kind of compare it against, uh, all the other things that you have here, which again, I don't have a whole lot going through here. Floss teeth. This is another one that I need to be better at. So I'm tracking that. I've only 50% uh, success on, <laughs> on flossing my teeth. Every you guys are you guys are learning all about my my bad habits apparently. Uh, so so here we go. It's a, it's an app that is essentially built around helping you form hopefully better habits. But really, you could use this for any habit that you want uh, or any kind of regular reminder and keeping data points uh, around all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, pretty cool stuff. You get, you can track up to three habits, uh, or three, three th things. <laughs> Somebody in the chat room is like, habits are bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bad habits are, are still bad habits, but, uh, you know, it's just for You tracking. can have good habits. Flossing your there teeth is good, a good habit. There are good habits yeah. as well. Um, you can have up to three habits that you track, that you check when you download. Uh, the developer has an interesting kind of method of upgrading to the premium version, which is to contact the developer with either something you really like about the app or an idea that you have or whatever. Once you do that, I think you get up to a hundred habits that you can track. So 
kind of an interesting approach. You're not paying more, but you're kind of it's kind of forcing you to let them know what you think, essentially. And uh, I suppose all that kind of feedback is good for a developer. It's a good way to get the feedback as long as you don't mind letting them know what you think. Uh, so that is it. It's pretty easy to, to add a new habit. It's, you know, there's different types. Uh, you can either set one up that's yes, no, did you do this or did you not? Or you can set up number, uh, you know, how many cigarettes do you want to <laughs> you know, pare down to uh, from what you're doing right now or how many push-ups or hours of study, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it kind of walks you through, you know, what kind of uh, habit kind of uh, approach through the app is the best way to go. And I don't know. I like I like the uh, the layout of it, and it's just pretty easy to use. Well, you can swap swipe through here to see your uh, different streaks and all that kind of stuff. And some of these things also have little motivational words down here. On on Jim, for example, uh, <laughs> wait a minute, I just got rid of it. Not a lifting thing, but I took my shirt off in public for the first time ever yesterday. That was pretty cool, says anonymous. Okay, then. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> this is called Habit Bull. And that's B-U-L-L. -L. It's all one word, Habit Bull. And it is free and has the potential to help you uh, create better habits, hopefully. That's kind of what it's all about. So uh, check it out. And there's also uh, notifications that, that kind of pop up if you so choose. I think I mentioned that, but you can set them up, and it'll kind of give you a nice little prod and say, hey, do this now because you said you were going to. So there you go. Uh, all right, so three apps in the arena this week, Yahoo News Digest, Kingdom Rush, and Habit Bowl. Which is your favorite? Go to AAAPoll.com slash 161 and vote for your favorite app of the week. And early reports are in. And Habit Bowl and Yahoo News Digest coming out of the gate and a tie. We'll see where this lands. Oh. Anything can happen, oh. as they say. Oh. oh, hey, I love watching it in real time. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly Yahoo News Digest took the lead. There we go. Uh, cool stuff. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming on today. Or, yeah, you bet. As yeah, sorry. you're like yeah. hooked into your game. Yeah, no, I finally got it working when I, when I have it actually in front of me instead of off to the side. I'm yeah, like, I know. It's hard playing I'm, the uh, games to the now side. Now I'm actually playing it, so I've got to stop that and say, yes, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, no, it's always great to be here, and uh, yeah. thanks for having me. I love talking about Android, as you know. So right on. Well, we anytime. Will have you back uh, sometime soon yep. uh, to talk about Android? We yep. always love having you on. Uh, tell people where they can find all the stuff that you're doing. So you can find me at uh, uh, Google Plus is the best place. I'm Aaron Newcomb there. Just look me up. I'm there. Lots of you follow me and appreciate that. Um, but you can also have a conversation with me there, which is great. Uh, I love having conversations with people when they're like, hey, I saw you talk about this on All About Android. What do you think about this? And so I you know, go back and forth and have a little argument or a little discussion. Um, it's really, really good. So I love hanging out on Google+. Plus. Also, this weekend is Maker Faire, so I'll be down there. Oh, nice. With my local makerspace, Benicia Makerspace, um, which I'm a co-founder of. And so we decided to go to Maker Faire and try to promote the makerspace since it's a new new place. So we'll be down there. If you're down at Maker Faire and you want to meet me, just come over to where all of the maker hacker spaces are. There's going to be probably a half a dozen of them at least um, down at Maker Maker Faire this year. So just come over to where those are. I'll be over there. Look for Benicia Makerspace. I'd love, love, love to talk to some folks that uh, know me from the show and from other shows that I do here on the Twit Network. So uh, please, uh, please uh, get in touch with me if you're going to be there this weekend. It's going to be warm. It's going to be warm, although not as warm as the next couple of days. But yeah, it's going to be really yeah. warm. So uh, yeah, if you're going to Maker Faire, bring water with you uh, or buy water there. Either way. And bring some sunscreen. Put some sunscreen on before you, you know, before you either leave the car, or bring it with you, so you can put some on. Because I have been a recipient of nasty sunburns at Maker Faire, and it happens really easily. Yeah, probably so uh, fast. yeah, really fast out mm -hmm. there because it's going to be hot. So, or yeah. find some shade. Come inside and and look for me because right I'll on. be inside. Thank you, Aaron. Have fun. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it was great, great yeah, having you on. As always, uh, Gina, what's going on with you? I'm working on ThinkUp, thinkup.com, when I'm not here on the Twitter network, that is. Uh, you should check it out. It's uh, social networking analytics for, you know, actual humans. And I also co-host This Week in Google here on the Twit Network, and that airs on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. I'll be on tomorrow with Jeff and Leo, so you should stop on by. We talk about Android a little bit, but we also talk about Google and the cloud and Facebook and Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, so check it out. Radical. Do check it out. Brian. <gasps> what about you? Remembered? You? I remembered. I uh, always It remember. only took one time for me yeah. to... 
Yeah. <laughs> for it's you to a, forget me. Yeah, no, I feel I still feel very bad about that. It cut deep. Cut yeah, deep. I know. That's why it feels bad. <laughs> uh, uh, but thank you, Jason. <laughs> uh, when I'm not TDing this show, I'm doing Know How with a crazy padre who's walking around the studio. Uh, so you can watch that on Thursdays. I'm going to probably see Aaron at Maker Fair this weekend, too. So I'll be there with Padre. Uh, other than that, I should probably end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Before Padre decides he needs to hop on the mic and say yes. something. Uh, and you can find me at about me slash Jason Howell. Uh, follow my musical exploits at yellowgoldmusic.com. And uh, I don't know, just search my name. I'm on the internet. Uh, that's about it. Uh, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you to the chat room. Always good to see you guys active in there. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. You can send us an email, AAA at twit.tv, or a link to a video mail through email. That helps. Uh, Twitter, we are at Android Show. Google Plus, just search for all about Android. Uh, show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA. You can also find our episodes in YouTube, uh, iTunes, all over the place. Uh, oh, subreddit, twitaa.reddit.com. That's about it. Uh, and you can catch us live every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.